as I look into my crystal ball, I see us making a lot of cool stuff together. <laughs> and this is the first thing. Woo! I know all of us always dreamed about having a crystal ball. And while mine are ours, won't tell the future, it'll sure tell you a lot about the room it's in. So uh, let's check out what we need to put this thing together and get started. So the pieces we need for this, the, break it down into what you have to have and what's optional. What you have to have to start with, the ESP12E. That's called the Node MCU in some places. That's going to be the heart of the project. You definitely want to have an LED. This is an RGB LED. It's able to, to display all three colors plus mixes of those colors. You want one of these photo cells. It's basically a resistor that changes its resistance based on the amount of light so we can actually measure light levels with it. We'll need some resistors. I've got all the values in the description below. And some jumper wires. And I highly recommend one of these. This is a DHT11. You can get a DHT22. What this thing does is it lets you measure both temperature and humidity all in one device, which is really handy. So we're going to be measuring the temperature and humidity of the room. And a nice thing to have is one of these. It's a motion sensor. It uses uh, the infrared from your body heat to tell when someone's moving around in the room. That's going to be a nice thing to have later on for a home assistant to know who's in what room and it can control lights based on that. Uh, some color jumpers would be really nice. If you color code your wires it makes life a lot easier. And then the next thing you'll need something either exactly the same but it doesn't have to be. You can actually be very creative. You'll need some kind of a box for it to sit in. You can see I use this one. It's a very nice box. Dollar Store came through with this. Very simple, very light wood. Before you start, you can actually paint it or stain it if you wanted to, but I kind of like the natural color. And you need something to shine the light into. I was lucky enough to find one of these at the Dollar Store. Very handy little thing. Originally what it was meant to do is you put batteries in it and it changes the light over time. We don't want just random lights. We want to be able to control the light. So we're going to cut the bottom out of this and, and have our own LED in there instead. But uh, it actually makes for a very, very nice look. Almost looks like somebody knew what they're doing put it together, but nope, it was me. So what we're going to be doing is, you already learned last time how to program these things. There's going to be a link down below where you can get the software that you need to put on it. Uh, we're going to go through and we're going to put together all the different devices that we're going to hook up to it and I'll show you what pins to hook them up so that it work with the software. Although I'll also show you how to change the pins if you need to. And then we're going to put it all in this nice little box and it's going to sit on a shelf and it'll tell you the temperature and humidity in the room and the light levels. So it'll all go to your home assistant and you'll be able to check those things anytime you want. And then as time goes on, we're actually going to be able to use those values for a little bit more intelligence in the system. So hey, let's get started. So first we're going to start with the RGB LED. First thing to know about these things is what their pin out is. You can see I spread the pins out a bit. One of the pins is longer than the other three. That's going to be your negative, your common. And then one of two choices in this one. This first pin is red, the third is green, and the last one's blue. Some of them have these two swapped. Red, blue, green. So what we're going to do is, we're going to hook up some wires. I've actually color coded them. I got some of these. These are very cheap off eBay. If you have 
a way to put your own connectors on the end and that's a great way to do it too. You can just use regular wire. I'm going to show you this way because I'm going to assume that you guys don't all have that extra stuff. What we're going to do is take one of these regular jumpers we're going to cut off one end and we're going to use it to solder up to the resistors and to the pins. So basically what we're going to be doing is the black wire is going to be our ground and we're going to solder that straight to the black wire because it doesn't need a resistor. Then we're going to solder our resistors onto the red, green and blue and then we're going to solder the red, green and blue wires to the other end of the resistor and uh, we'll actually make it look nice and neat and tidy in the end it'll look like the way it should have been when you bought it piece isn't very robust. It's basically a bunch of wires hanging around and if they touch each other they're going to short out and if they touch something else they can short out. So these little magic pieces called heat shrink tubing are our best friend. So they shrink quite a bit so even though you find one that will fit over top of the connector on the end push it right up to the LED. You can use a regular lighter or I use this nice little bull torch here. As long as you keep your heat moving. Works out wonderfully. thing you want is we want to use this as a resistor but the values you get if you just hook this up between let's say 3.3 volts on one end and our measuring pin on the other your values don't really end up getting a very good range so what we end up doing is one pin on one side will be hooked up to voltage 3.3 and we'll have another resistor where one pin is on ground and then where the two resistors come together they'll be attached together and attached to your pin and that's called a voltage divider and it gives you a nice, much nicer range because basically this acts as a pull down resistor so what we're going to do is we're going to have these two pieces together a wire on each of these
now that we got it all ready to go, we can start assembling. We got a hole in the front of our box and two holes in the back. This is going to be for our motion sensor. That'll be for the power to come in and we're going to we're going to have our DHC hanging at the back so we have room temperature. And then this will be for the light sensor. So let's make sure we have everything. We have our box. We got our temperature sensor and humidity sensor. Have our ESP motion sensor, LED and light sensor that we got ready earlier, and of course the crystal ball. So all you gotta do is assemble it. in. Make sure you've added these lines. If you want to change your uh, your topics for how it's sending it, then this is where you would change it. Once you're ready to go, as long as you've hooked everything up the same way that we showed, you should be able to program it right here. So what it does first, as you can see on the bottom, it says it's compiling. Now the compiling is done and now it's uploading it to the board. Thirty three percent. You get the picture. came alive and we can actually go as you go to our home assistant you can see all the values show up up at the top now the next big step that we're going to be doing with home assistant is we're going to be grouping things together and putting them in rooms and then after that we'll maybe put a picture of, a, of the layout of our house. Baby steps. But hey, first project done. Woohoo!